This week's episode of the Moonlight Graham Show is brought to you by The People's Company. That's right, they are back as a sponsor because so often I hear from farmers throughout Iowa and throughout the Midwest who are listening to the podcast while they are planting, while they are harvesting. They're in their tractors, they're in their combines, which makes The People's Company a perfect partner for the Moonlight Graham Show here. As you guys probably well know, The People's Company is based in West Des Moines, Iowa, but they've really grown to be one of the nation's leading providers in land brokerage, land management, land appraisal and investment services. These guys, and I know Andrew Zelmer and Matt Adams over there at the People's Company, these guys live and breathe farmland, farm management, and they know that industry better than anybody. So if you're looking to buy a farm, sell a farm, having an auction coming up, call the People's Company. They are the best in the business. Check them out at peoplescompany.com. This is the Moonlight Graham Show, a freewheeling conversation with the role players, the underdogs, and guys with flat out great stories in sports. Hello and welcome back to the Moonlight Graham Show. Once again, I am your host, Tim Flattery, and our Moonlighter for today is frankly a guy you've probably never even heard of, but I guarantee you've heard of the company that he founded. His name is Jonathan Jawade, and the company that he co-founded and is the current COO of is Baseballism. Now, if you follow baseball at all, you've probably come across baseballism over the past few years because they have exploded. They are a baseball lifestyle brand based out of Portland, Oregon, so you know they're cool. And they've created this baseball brand, baseballism, that is for the player, by the player, and you can tell that these guys get it. I remember the first time I was in a baseballism store. I was actually in Fenway Park last baseball season watching a Red Sox versus Oakland A's game. I actually sat up on the monster. But before that game, I was walking around Fenway Park. It was my first time ever there. And I stumbled into the baseballism store that's right behind the green monster in left field. And right when I walked in, I was blown away because I had never been in a baseball shop that felt so much like a dugout. I can't really explain it in any other way other than every article of clothing that they were offering, every piece of gear that they had for sale, I felt like was right up my alley and I wanted to buy everything in the store. And at that point, I had never really heard of baseballism, but I started following the brand that night. And over the past you know, year or so, I've become a huge fan of everything that these guys are doing. And if you go to their website at baseballism.com, you'll see that you know they have some unbelievably great merchandise that is tied to films like Major League. They just put out a Field of Dreams shirt collection, which is so cool. And, and you can just tell that, that the people that are behind this brand They've played a lot of baseball. They've spent a lot of time in dugouts and they just really understand and love the game of baseball. And I think that's why this this company has blown up so much really over the past couple of years. Now to the point where you see so many of their stores all across the country. They just opened a brand new retail store up in St. Louis And even better, they just built this great new retail location at the Field of Dreams movie lot. And it's not just some random gift shop that they built at the Field of Dreams. They did it the right way. They built this awesome rustic looking barn that looks like it's been on the property for 50 years now. And it's a tremendous upgrade to the previous gift shop that that was there at the Field of Dreams and is really going to help that location take a step forward and become even more of an attraction. So we had Jonathan Jawade, the co-founder, the COO here on the podcast. He gave us about a half an hour, really great interview, really enjoyed my time talking to him. And you can tell right away that this guy has a passion for baseball and he loves what he does. And so in the spirit of small business and entrepreneurship, I got to thinking, you know, baseballism is probably struggling right now with the, with the COVID-19. You know, there's probably not as pe- many people going to the field of dreams. So many of their stores are kind of at ballpark locations across the country 
country and there's not games going on right now. And so I'm sure, you know, baseballism and all these other companies are wanting baseball to come back and they need baseball to come back. And it got me thinking that what if I reached out to some of the companies that follow the Moonlight Graham show on Twitter to see if we can do some some ads and raise some awareness for companies out there that if you're a baseball fan that you might want to support. And so I sent a tweet out last week and said, hey, if there's any any baseball businesses out there that have been negatively affected by this current pandemic that we're in, reach out to me. I'd love to do an advertisement here on the show, free of charge, just to raise some awareness, maybe drive a little bit more website traffic. And the first company that reached out was one of my favorite baseball companies they're in. We actually had them on the podcast, D&J Glove Repair. D&J Glove Repair out of Minneapolis. It's Jimmy and his son, Dom Leonetti. That's what the D&J stand for, Dom and Jimmy. They have djgloverepair.com. I actually had Jimmy on the podcast. So if you want to listen to the D&J Glove Repair episode. It's actually episode 110 of the podcast. But what these guys do, they're true craftsmen. And they got this awesome workshop um, at their house up in Minneapolis. And they take old baseball gloves. They bring them back to life. They refurbish them. They work with the leather, leather. They are true craftsmen. And so if you have an old glove that you want restored, or even if you have you know a new glove that you want to have new strings put in it, or you want it to get reconditioned before the season starts, call DJ Glove Repair. Hit them up online, djgloverepair.com. They are literally the best in the business. I actually had a glove that that I took to Jimmy that was completely roached out. It was about 70 years old, and Jimmy brought that sucker back, back to life. So head to djgloverepair.com. The next business that reached out is a business called McGuire Video Production, MVP for short, and he actually sent me a script to read for the ad. So here's the script. Hey, podcast listeners, could your business, school, team, special event, or unique idea use award-winning video work to help show it off? Then turn to Emmy Award-winning McGuire Video Productions. Is that true? Did these guys really win an Emmy? MVP offers top quality video production from first pitch to walking it off with the bases loaded. MVP has the equipment and knowledge to take your video once and make them a reality by knocking it out of the park. Weddings, farm and home realty listings, TV commercials, you name it, McGuire Video Production has done it. MVP covers all of Iowa from Memorial Park in Bancroft to Principal Park in Des Moines and all of the field of dreams in between. For more information, log on to www.mcguirevideoproduction.com or check them out on Facebook. Be sure to tell Coach Andrew that Mag- the Moonlight Graham Show sent you. After all, who doesn't want to say they worked with the best? MVP. That's right, Andrew McGuire. I know he's a high school baseball coach on the side here in the Des Moines area. He's from Algona originally. He's a really good guy. So check it out, McGuireVideoProductions.com. You know, the next business that reached out was a company called Baseball Barbecue. And I'm really actually excited about this. And I I have to show you what's on their website. So BaseballBBQ.com. Check these guys out. I'm going to read just a little bit of their About Me right now. So Baseball BBQ started one summer day when a broken grill fork and a cracked bat came together to make the perfect grilling tool. That moment gave rise to an idea and fused together two of our lifelong passions into one common goal, to share the love of the game and the grill. So you heard that right. These guys are taking grill tools, you know, that you're flipping burgers or dogs on the, on the grill, and they put a baseball bat handle on the end of it. So it's literally like uh, the front of it's a spatula or a grill fork or something like that, and the end of it is the handle of a baseball bat. It's so cool. He- check them out at baseballbbq.com. These guys are baseball guys. They're entrepreneurs, and they had this really great idea. And if you're, you know, a classic dad out there or a baseball guy, you know, you need these barbecue toolkits. It's 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 a great idea. So check them out, baseballbbq.com. I love that one. You know, the next company that reached out is also a former Moonlighter 
Andy Brown. I'm actually sitting in front of an Andy Brown painting on my wall right now. Andy Brown, check him out at his website is andybrownstadiums.com. We featured him for episode 128 of the podcast. This is the guy that went around to all 30 stadiums last year and painted all 30 stadiums. You got to check him out. If you're looking for like really good baseball art, hand done, unique baseball art, check out andybrownstadiums.com. He's got some really great Field of Dreams pieces on there, and he obviously painted every stadium in the major leagues. He's painted a ton of them down in Mexico, down in Korea as well. So your favorite baseball stadium across the world, I guarantee Andy Brown has painted it. Right now, he's supporting the hashtag artist support pledge on his website. So head over to andybrownstadiums.com. Check out all of his work. Buy something if you need to decorate some baseball room for yourself. Also, check out the hashtag artist support pledge pledge that he's doing right now on his website great guy uh help support andy brown okay we got two more left the next one or the next two are actually baseball training facilities so we got a lot of baseball training facilities you know throughout iowa and a couple of them have reached out that i want to talk about the first one is a place over in eastern Iowa. It's actually in Fairfax, Iowa, called Dugout Sports. So Dugout Sports over in Fairfax, Iowa, it's actually run by a guy named Jay Wannell. And Jay actually has the all-time best batting average for high school baseball out of the state of Iowa. So this guy knows what he's talking about. He played professional baseball. And a lot of the eastern Iowa professionals work out at this facility. So you've seen... Like if you've been following them on Twitter, they've had, they've had like five or six major leaguers working out there on a day to day basis right now. These guys know what they're talking about over at Dugout Sports. So, like I said, Dugout Sports it's a baseball softball facility in Fairfax, Iowa, on the southwest west side of Cedar Rapids. They welcome all players of all skill levels over to their complex. They got twelve thousand square feet over there, eleven batting cages, pitching machines, indoor out outdoor drive line plyo walls. They got arm arm care stations. They have everything you need for every age level of athlete. More than 12 professional players work out there, 25 college players, and nearly 20 youth teams called Dugout Sports their home. They also are home to some of the best instructors in the Midwest who are all former college and professional players. And also they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need somewhere to go work out, check them out, Dugout Sports. The last company that reached out is a company called Diamond Sports Academy over in Urbandale, Iowa. So if you're in the metro area, you're looking for a place to work out, check out Diamond Sports Academy. Uh, They're owned by a couple of guys named Chad Barnes and Jeff Johansson. Both of these guys are ex-Panther baseball players. They're ex-UNI guys, so they got to be all right, right? They are sitting on 17,500 square feet up in Urbandale. They got five hit tracks machines, four Rhapsodos machines, and they've been open since 2013. So these guys are really good guys over there at, at Diamond Sports Academy. If you've never done the hit tracks machines and those Rhapsodo machines, you got to do it. It's so much fun. You can essentially play a home run derby uh, on those hit tracks machines and those Rhapsodo machines. You can figure out all of those advanced stats that pitchers are getting in the major leagues. You can go do that yourself at Diamond Sports Academy up in Urbandale. So you guys... If you want to support local business, if you want to support some of these companies that have been really affected by the downturn of the economy economy lately, check out some of these businesses that we've highlighted. And in the meantime, enjoy this episode with the COO and co-founder of Baseballism. Check them out at Baseballism.com. You can find these guys all over social media. It's like the best baseball lifestyle brand that I've seen out there. So enjoy this episode with Jonathan Jawaid. But before we get to our interview, I know it's a tough time right now and a lot of people are out of work. So I wanted to talk about a new sponsor we have to have on the show, buildiowa.org, because the construction industry, especially throughout the Midwest, is still up and running and hiring. And so I was just on this website, buildiowa.org, and what really stood out to me was how much the professional men and women in this industry make. Did you know? That professional estimators on average make between sixty-two and eighty thousand dollars a year. 
How about crane operators? What a cool job that is. They make between 60 and 70 grand a year on average. The other great part about buildiowa.org is how they spell out exactly how you can get started in the 27 different careers they have listed on the website. They have active resources to companies that are training and hiring. That's right, hiring right now. We know some of you moonlighters are looking for a career change or perhaps you've been impacted by this pandemic. If that's you, head on over to buildiowa.org and check out the incredible careers available right now in the construction industry. There's also a link to a job board that lists active jobs that are open right now. The good people at Build Iowa are here to help and they want to make you aware that there are rewarding career options available for you. And for those of you on social media, check them out. You can find them Build Iowa on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. That's right, buildiowa.org. All right, so Jonathan Jawade, COO and co-founder of Baseballism, joins the Moonlight Graham Show. Jonathan, thank you for joining the podcast. My pleasure. Um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here. So, Jonathan, uh, you are not an Iowan, but I know the recent retail facility that you guys have built at Baseballism is over at the Field of Dreams. I haven't visited it yet due to the current, current climate. I'm excited to get over there. But my first question for you is, as you're watching Field of Dreams as a kid, did that movie connect with you growing up in you know Portland, Oregon, in the Portland, Oregon area? Because Obviously, here in Iowa, it means something because it's so close to home for so many of us. But what did that mean to you as a baseball fan out in Portland? It, it meant a lot. It was actually probably in my top three, maybe even top two, probably Sandlot and Field of Dreams um, that were on in rotation in my childhood. And although it didn't, it didn't mean much to me locally because I'm not from Iowa, the story meant a lot, the relationship uh, between father and son and just the connection to the game. So it really did resonate me um, at a young age. And now that I've you know, developed into a father, I've got a five-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter. Uh, I find myself watching Field of Dreams even before this project uh, was on the table. I, you know, my son and I would, would watch Field of Dreams and he really soaked it in. And I thought for, you know, at that time, a four-year-old was, was really interesting that he would at least sit down for periods of time and soak it in. So I think that that movie, um, it's, it's pretty wide range in its appeal. I know you and your team came out to Dyersville last fall uh, to talk about the building of the Baseballism retail store on the movie site there. Was that your first time to the field? It was. And as you can imagine, you know, for those that don't know, we've got stores um, across the country. Uh, now we're up to 11. And at that time we had nine and um, five of the retail stores are in close proximity to Major League Baseball stadiums. Right. So I've had a lot of experience at Fenway and Wrigley and these, you know, what what everybody would consider bucket list baseball destinations. <clears throat> so it's become unfortunately, it's become pretty business for me. I'm studying foot traffic and, and what, what can we achieve here? Can, can we achieve our brand message? But when I came to Dyersville for the first time, a lot of that went away. I mean, I was a, I was a kid. Yeah. I was an absolute child. It's All pretty I cool, to isn't do it? Was, like, it, it, it hasn't it, changed it a whole so lot. Cool. It, it has, right? So it was my first experience. It, it looked exactly like it did in the movie. And all I wanted to do when I got there is get out of those business meetings so I could go take BP or throw BP on the field. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it, it's a very special place. Did you play catch and walk through the corn and, you know, make the rounds? We did everything imaginable that we could have done it in a two-hour period. We had a two-hour, like a designated two-hour play period in our day before we flew back to Portland. So we took BP. We threw BP. We uh, you know rolled some double plays. We robbed home home run. It was August, so we yeah. robbed home runs in the corn. We came out of the corn. Uh, we, we we did everything we could, and I wish we could have stayed longer. So, with the the retail store being built there, was this all spurred by the game coming up in August between the Yankees and the White Sox, or was this moving even before that announcement? It it wasn't moving before, but I won't. I can't say that the game was the catalyst for our trip. Dan Evans, who's a consultant out there, who's oh, yeah. the former, um, yeah, former GM for the Dodgers. He's been a fan of our brand for years. And when he was brought on, you know, to help consult the field of dreams, you know, he, he was 
integral in bringing the the game, the Major League Baseball game, to the the site. But I can say that, and, and so he reached out to us because he he was a fan of the brand and knew what we could do on the retail side and thought that perhaps you know there was an opportunity there. And I, I would I'm, I'm certain that even without that game, we would have made that trip because of because of what that field means to um, us in, in baseball. So let's back up a little bit to the start of baseballism. I know you played a little juco baseball. You and your buddies were on the on the club team at Oregon. But how did this baseballism company start? What was the or- origin here? The four founders played club baseball at the University of Oregon, and and that was right before that, they brought the team back, right? Because they brought the team back in they, like two thousand nine, maybe. Yeah, that was. I think it was two. 2008 or 2009 they brought the team back and okay. i graduated in 2000, 2007 um so good and bad the club team was the only team on campus um and it was it was great we got a lot of fans um we, we were pretty good it was an evolution and we started uh, a baseball camp in the summer eugene at that point was eugene where we went to school university of oregon was pretty football heavy and so we felt like we could make an impact on youth baseball by offering you know maybe a, a unique camp uh, for kids, for younger kids and, um, doing things a little different. So we did. And, you know, in an effort to be different, we created a a camp shirt that was a little bit more design forward, a little bit more minimalist. Um, and it just, it it had our, what we call our classic logo. Uh, the baseball isn't spelled out. Um, but the I was, uh, a bat. Um, and the camp was awesome. It was, it was, it was what you would expect from a youth baseball camp, um, although we did things a little bit different. Um, But then we had to dissolve the camp and go out into the real world and and get jobs because it was just, you know, for a lack of a better phrase, it was just a moonlight for us. We like that phrase. And then, uh, yeah, I know. (laughs) I know. I do too. (laughs) Um, And uh, so we we would get – people would come up to us because we would wear the camp shirts out, whether it would be just – out going to grab lunch, you know, in our professional careers or going out on a Friday night at the bars, people would say, Oh, that shirt, it's really cool. It's baseballism. What, what is that? And so we just, Oh, you know, youth baseball camp, but that, uh, that kept going and going, you know, we would get inquiries and inquiries. And so we decided, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe we have something here. Let's make a small run of, uh, baseballism shirts, um, and see if we can sell them. And my business partner, Travis was, uh, teaching, uh, baseball at a facility in Beaverton, Oregon. We decided to, you know, we printed 48. We put them out um, just kind of on a four-way, nothing special. And they, they sold out relatively quickly. And so that transformed into let's create a Kickstarter, you know, crowdfunding campaign um, on this concept of lifestyle baseball apparel. And we're going to take, you know, the profits from this company and we're going to really do our best to invest back in, in to the game, into the game, you know, youth baseball. And what year was that? So we did. Exactly. This was in 2012. So okay. camp started in five, dissolved in seven, um, and then reimagined five years later in 2012. And so we launched the Kickstarter, and it was successful. We raised $13,000, which is our goal, enough for inventory, and enough for a custom website back then. And we launched it. Uh, we launched Baseballism.com. And by then we'd had, you know, Travis is so brilliant on social media and had really cultivated uh, an engaged audience that really loved baseball. And it was it, the, the really the catalyst was these baseball quotes that were unique content that we were putting out. Yeah. Now, these are Travis's ideas. Um, and it's, it's not from it's not from a team narrative. It's from a really a playing and coaching narrative, which I think more people can relate to. Yeah, because that's that was my initial introduction to baseballism was seeing those memes with the baseball quotes or baseball sayings kind of get circulated around the internet. Like before I even knew you guys sold shirts or hats or gloves or any of this stuff, um, I would see those those memes, you know, circulate. And my first reaction was those sound like they come from somebody that spent some time in a dugout. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it start. It, it really was an evolution. It started as what kind of creative tweets can we put out there um, to get engagement? And then once we started getting engagement, we decided, gosh, we better really brand these 
Um, and so we started to put them up as images on Facebook yeah. where we created that cream background and that, that red baseballs and classic logo. So it really, we really wanted to burn in everybody's mind that this is our original content. And by creating that consistency, it, it did that. What was the first, like, whether it was a meme or, or quote on Facebook or whether it was a shirt that really took off that kind of led you guys to believe you had something there? Yeah. So, um, like I said, we launched in the beginning of 2013, actually ended 12 in December. Um, and we really hit a spike in April of 13. Um, and it was because of a quote that was put up on social media. Um, and I want to make sure I get it right here. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to read it for you. The name on the front of the jersey represents who you play for. The name on the back of the jersey represents who raised you. Do them both justice. Mm, nice. That, that, yeah, that quote, it was shared 4,000 times on Facebook. Wow. And at, at that point, April 2013, that was absolutely gigantic for us. And we really started to see a difference in revenue. And we don't know if it was a, a celebrity or a baseball player, you know, an MLB player that shared it, but it, it, that was our first viral post. Uh, and that was what really put us on the map. So, so many people, Jonathan, think they have like clever ideas for shirts, especially when it comes to sports. You know, there's a lot of meatheads out there that think they can start a t-shirt company, but what made your brand different and, and able to connect? Because, you know, there's a million like on to online retailers and in all of these small little companies trying to make it and printing t-shirts, but you guys have really captured like the essence and the authenticity of baseball you know, how are you able to do that? You know, we, our approach is pretty simple. Um, we are brand first. So baseballism is first. And our, our motto is, um, or, our, or what you would consider our mission statement is show the world how great baseball can be. And every day we go to work and our approach is how can we be as authentic as possible? Often you get, so you describe what we see all the time, t-shirt brands that pop up um, and, and any, anybody thinks that they can do it. You also get people that come to us and say, why don't you do other sports? You've created a recipe. Why don't you have basketballism or hockeyism? And the truth is that with our principles, we're not, we're not the right people for it. We live and breathe baseball and our customer sees that. And so everything we put out is authentic. Another principle that we stand by is, we don't really take sides. There's no reason for us to be, you know, on one side or the other for um, a bat flip, right? Or one side or the other for the steroid era. We really want to um, really be wholesome and a family brand. And um, I think that that approach has really separated us. And I will just add, we realized early on, you know, we launched in 2013 and we realized by the end of 13 that we needed to have a retail store. Uh, and, and that would really authenticate us because like you said, anybody can start a t-shirt brand, but once you start to, to go out there and lean forward and create, um, meaningful retail experiences, that's, what's going to separate you from the long tail of anybody else that can start a website. Yeah, I completely agree. I've, I've been to your Boston store right outside of Fenway stadium. And I, I was there last season and I remember walking through that store and my first reaction was these guys get it. Like they get baseball. They love baseball because of the details. And it goes back to like the original quote that I would see on Facebook. And initially I read it and I saw these guys get it. And like, I, you get that with like the hum babe shirts or the frozen rope shirts that you guys do. You know, you got to know baseball a little bit um, to get, get the joke there or get the, get the kind of insider knowledge. Um, but what was interesting to me is when I looked you guys up and realized that you're from Portland, you know, because you're such an authentic baseball company, but I wouldn't necessarily consider Portland a baseball city. I would consider like St. Louis or Chicago or, you know, some of the Boston even, but it surprised me that you guys were from Portland. What's the baseball culture like out in Portland? The baseball culture, um, is, is great out in Portland and it's actually really growing, you know, as of late, as of the last couple of years, we've got a very strong movement to bring a major league baseball team um, here. You know, the market has changed. 
um, the, the sports teams that are here sell out, you know, the Blazers and the Timbers. But I will say that um, being from Portland has really shaped our brand. Three of the founders are from Portland, and one of the founders um, is from Honolulu, Hawaii. And, you know, those two places have something in common in, in that they, there is no professional baseball in these towns. And so we grew up pretty pretty agnostic when it came to, um, you know, professional baseball. I mean, we had teams we cheered for, but really our approach um, <clears throat> to the game and the brand is from a coaching and player's perspective, right? And so that's why you've seen this brand grow so much without licensing because we continue to breed this authentic approach and it comes from, uh, you know, coaching and playing rather than, you know, cheering for the Cardinals or Cubs. Yeah, you mentioned baseball is growing, and that kind of goes against kind of the narrative that you see, because some of the narrative you'll see out there is that baseball is just an old old person sport, and it's dying because they haven't been able to attract like a younger demo. But I've heard you say a number of times, not only in this interview, but in other interviews, that you believe baseball is growing. Why do you say that? Well, there's, there's really documentation out there, and I can um, dive into the weeds on the articles, but um, without giving credit to the source, um, lately, I've been doing a lot of reading on youth participation in baseball and specifically what what um, advanced baseball, right? So th- what you can quantify how many kids play Little League, right? But how many kids are playing, you know, 15 or more games a year, you know, above and beyond? Maybe they're uh, playing travel ball or maybe they're really taking baseball serious. And that number continues to grow. Um, and so th- those are the metrics that we really watch. You know, the, the fluctuation of um, Major League Baseball att- attendance is a metric that we do look at, but we're here for the long run. And we our, our focus is really on youth baseball. Is youth participation up? Uh, we believe it is. Um, and what, what can we do to fuel that? Yeah, interesting. What got you into the game? Gosh, I don't know if anybody's ever asked me that question, which is so strange. Um, <laughs> It, is, it, it was just a product of being in a blue-collar neighborhood and having a really, a really prevalent and involved Little League. And it was, I was the youngest of four boys, and all, all four of my brothers played. So it was just kind of like the rite of passage. Right. Did, you, did your dad teach you the game, or did you have a, a local neighborhood dad, or how did you learn it? Yeah, I mean, um, my dad did. He did play. Um, he was, I would say, one toe in the water in terms of baseball, but he would – it wouldn't prevent him from squatting down and catching a bullpen right. for me. Um, you know, we also had, um, you know, a lot of parents in the neighborhood that, that coached, right. I mean, it was, it was, it was daddy ball, you know, <laughs> like it or hate it. That's what it was, but it really bonded our community. And I've got lifelong friends that I, I wouldn't have had um, in baseball. Jonathan, the way we end every episode of the Moonlight Graham show is with the five big questions. And the first question I got for you is who is your biggest role model in your life? You know, this might keep, seem kind of lame, but it, it's really evolved. You know, I often look at uh, leaders, whether, you know, leaders that have gone before and not necessarily baseball, right, whether it be John F. Kennedy or Abraham Lincoln. But I find myself lately as I've really developed into a dad as using my kids um, as kind of a mirror. Am I, am I being a role model uh, for them? that's really going to be meaningful and it's going to not only change their life, but change their behavior in a way that impacts everybody else. So as of, as of the last few years, I've really been using my kids as a, as a reflection to um, set a good role model, not only for them, but everybody around me. Hmm. So I'm sure you've had plenty of uh, cool interactions over the last, you know, eight years since this, this company has been going uh, meeting players, meeting famous baseball people. Have you ever been starstruck in any introduction that you've had? I was um, building out our Arizona store that's in Old Town Scottsdale in, I believe, 2016, and it was late. Um, I believe that it was a day before pitchers and catchers were reporting. Um, and I was, you know, I had two workers there. We were still building out the store. And I ran across the street to what I believe is from all these pizza, I might be getting it wrong. And I was, it was taking forever. It's a pretty famous pizza place um, in Scottsdale. Um, and they asked me to go around back to uh, pick up um, my to-go order. 
And I went back there and I was waiting and I was, you know, doing what everybody does. I was checking my email on my phone and uh, Clayton Kershaw, who were what appeared to be Clayton Kershaw, um, stood in line right behind me. And I kind of turned around and looked at him. I was like, I'm ah, pretty sure that's Kershaw. And, uh, and normally I'm not starstruck, but I was like, I've got to have a conversation with this guy. <laughs> and I would say that that was a moment that uh, stopped me in my tracks. Um, and it, it was pretty cool. He was just a normal guy getting pizza like me, although a little bit more talented on the diamond. So we're in such a weird time and it's got to be tough on baseballism right now with baseball not being played right now. And so many of your retail stores, you know, tied to, uh, you know, local stadium areas and the field of dreams we already mentioned. Is this the biggest challenge that you guys have faced at baseballism? Yes. And it's not close. I mean, it is, it is a huge challenge. Um, and I think it's, uh, I think it's making us a lot better. I think that you'll, you know, if you were to do an exit survey of all business owners uh, after we get through, through this pandemic, um, you'll see a, a, a true appreciation for efficiency. Um, and it's been, it's no, no doubt been the most trying time in the history of our business. We often said before this, that in the history of our business, because we haven't experienced a downturn, um, we've not faced true adversity. I mean, right. we've been grow, 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 grow. And now here we are, you know, I'm on a plane to spring training, knowing that when I get off this plane, they're going to cancel baseball. And it's a, it's a, it's a real earthquake. Yeah, I bet. I, I can only imagine what you guys are going through right now. Next question here is, I haven't been to your store up in Cooperstown, but I heard from Jeremy Mitchell, the, the founder of Mitchell Bat Company, that it's so cool. I've, I've seen the store in Fenway. So I got to imagine that you've been – to so many cool places in the baseball world and have had a lot of good experiences in the baseball world. Is there still like a destination or a baseball experience on your bucket list that, that you still have yet to do? I just want to start with uh, Mitchell back is Great. I really respect that brand. He, he does it right. Yeah. Um, I, I would say that, you know, I've had the opportunity. I really, 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 really appreciate Japanese baseball. And it's because it's a mix of what I would consider an international soccer crowd coupled with the game that I really love. Yeah. Um, it, and it's a different uh, game too. It, it is a different game, a different approach. So I would say that um, I've been to Japan. We, 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 we studied Tokyo as a market for uh, baseball, like a baseball as a retail store or stores. Um, and that's something that's ongoing. Um, but as you can imagine, we, we put the brakes on, um, uh, but I would say that, um, you know, uh, I've never been to a game. I've never been to a game in Japan. Unfortunately, when I went, it was, um, in the off season. So that is, that is still, um, on my bucket list, whether it's, uh, you know, Osaka Tigers or any, any of those teams. What's the best advice you've ever received? Always find a way to say yes. Ooh. I mean, it is just, it's so easy to say no and it, whether it's with your partner or whether it's with your customers or whether it's with your employees find you know you you can't always find a way to do it but when you can find a way to say yes it is an absolute game changer i love that it's like the jim carrey movie <laughs> so before i let you go I, I know you love playing the game and you know we, we've talked about that you played some juco ball you played uh club ball at oregon when's the last time you 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 know put the spikes on and you went out there either played a game took bp got on the field mm. so uh, the, the the spikes thing is really what'll make it go you know a little ways back after after college and i would say up until about four years ago i played men's baseball yeah nice. maybe even three i think it's three years ago uh, and I miss it. I miss it tremendously. The only reason um, I'm not playing these days uh, is because my travel schedule, you know, pre COVID-19 was pretty intense in the summer with having all these retail stores. Right. So it was hard for me to commit to a team when I'm never there, you know, and I'm the kind of guy that if I'm going to commit, I want to be there for my, for my teammates. So it's been about three years, but um, that's not to say you won't find me, you know, in the backyard throwing BP to my son or I'm still coaching. Uh, when I can for, for his, you know, coach pitch team. Um, so I'm always trying to find ways uh, to play. And if we do have an office game um, called uh, Ping Dinger, it's at play Ping Dinger on Instagram. <laughs> we actually have 5,000 followers on our uh, office game. Nice. But it is a mix of, yeah, it's a mix of swinging a wood bat, an office chair for the strike zone, and pitching with a, a, a ping pong paddle and a ball. 
Um, and we've had big leaguers come to the office and try to hit, and it is it is tough. I mean, they <laughs> it, it's a tough game. So check it out. Uh, so I find myself often still playing when I can, um, although it's, sometimes it's a, a, a unique approach. Nice. Well, if you guys get to Iowa this summer, hopefully for, for the game in August, uh, hopefully you have a little time. Let's, you and I, let's grab, let's grab a catch and let's grab a beer. I'm in. I'm, I'm in on all of that. <laughs> um, and, and let's hope that that major league game can, can still happen in August. Right. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on the Moonlight Graham Show. It's, it's been really fun to hear the baseballism story. My pleasure. Hey guys, thanks once again to listening to today's episode of the Moonlight Graham Show. And even though I do most of the interviews here on the podcast, there is a ton of work that happens behind the scenes that you guys don't see that make each episode possible. So I got to give a shout out to the Moonlight Graham Show team. First of all, Brian Sandvig, our producer. Brian does all of the post-production work. And in real life, he's not just a podcast producer. He's also a real estate agent. So if you're looking to buy or sell a home, down in the Kansas or Missouri areas, give Brian Sandvig a call. Next guy on that list is Brendan Gargano. Brendan does all of our design and artwork here on the podcast. He's one of the most talented artists I've ever met, and I love all of his work. If you need any help on the design side with logos or anything like that, give Brendan Gargano a call. The next guy on that list is Andy Flattery, my older brother. Andy, of course, has done some of the of the interviews here on the podcast he also is a certified financial planner he owns a business called simple wealth planning if you need any help in that area check andy flattery out and then of course the trusty co-host tom griffin and my younger brother neil flattery those guys are just busy being husbands being fathers they're family men but also they do a ton of work here on the show so thanks again for listening we really appreciate you guys subscribing and supporting the moonlight graham show